Over half of the UK looks like this, green and pleasant rolling hills of pasture and farmland. Only around 6% of our land is used for built up urban fabric like this. From up in the air, Britain looks so green and alive. So why is it one of the most nature depleted countries in the world? Why are one in seven of our species faced with extinction? And most importantly, is it too late to do anything about it? Around 56% of the UK is managed for agriculture. Yet intensive farming and poor agricultural management is a core driver behind the extinction crisis. In reality, these fields are not much more than green concrete. Almost devoid of any real native biodiversity. A century ago, they would have been alive with an orchestra of birdsong. Yet now, they're almost silent and desolate. Intensive farming practices and the concentrated use of fertilizers has led to the loss of an astonishing 97% of our wildflower meadows, depriving us of iconic and essential ecosystems. On the lawn below, another young family is feeding. Baby hedgehogs just out of the nest, watched over by their mother. Water voles are widespread in Britain, but they're such timid animals that few people ever see them. In the water, he's as much at home as on land. And it's this naturally amphibious lifestyle that sets the water vole apart from its close relatives, the bank and field voles. So while older generations can still remember a world where the countryside was full of wildlife, the current generation is facing the reality of a horribly depleted environment. Many fear that the government is apathetic to the destruction that is ensuing nationwide. This begs the question, what can we do to fix this mess? Rewilding is a, it's a really interesting concept because the fundamental difference, I think, between kind of traditional conservation and rewilding is that rewilding is a real look to the future. It's a way of trying to ensure that our habitats are working for the modern world. We need these landscapes to be fully functioning and that means sometimes we need to put back things that we've lost so that we can have as much complexity as we possibly can. Rewilding is, is all about that, how those landscapes can be as complicated as possible with uh, people and wildlife interacting in a really kind of new, exciting, dynamic way. The rate at which we're losing biodiversity currently, we are not doing what we should. We have a responsibility. And I think this is where rewilding comes in because it's large-scale ecosystem restoration. It's about restoring and repairing ecosystems and putting back the complexity and the interrelatedness between the wildlife and the habitats.
This is the Nep Estate in West Sussex, a wildlands project where some 3,500 acres of what was intensely farmed land laid out around the ruins of an ancient medieval castle has been given over as a safe haven for our wildlife. Since 2001, the land here has been devoted to a pioneering rewilding project. Using a careful selection of different animals as the drivers of habitat creation, each shaping the land in their own way. Along with efforts to restore dynamic natural watercourses, the project has seen an extraordinary increase in native wildlife. The hands-off large-scale approach of rewilding has shown huge promise and gives hope that if replicated across the country, rewilding could be the key to saving much of our wildlife from its path to extinction. So if we can just put in those kind of drivers of change, those kind of natural processes, if we can get those kick-started and so that, the, so that nature can kind of start to look after itself, we can start to have an impact on a much, much bigger scale. Rewilding in a way never really tried before in the UK, European bison are to be introduced back into England for the first time in 6,000 years. The hope is that they will become a keystone species that will kickstart a natural process of rewilding here in the Bling Woodland. It's known as a keystone species. And what keystone species do is they impact on an environment and create habitats that have all sorts of benefits for lots of other living creatures and organisms as well. They will regenerate, they'll move through the landscape, they will um, create standing deadwood, which is good for invertebrates, they will wallow and dust bathe, therefore sort of creating sort of large areas. Um, if you think of sort of the tonnage of a bison thrashing around on the floor, that's great because it actually it breaks off shoots, it removes areas of scrub, it creates basking areas for um, species like reptiles and amphibians. Um, and also what they do in terms of as they move through the landscape, they'll also um, scratch and brush up against trees to remove fur. On that fur, there's been articles um, we know where that fur has been used by bird species to line the nests and the insulation qualities has led to higher levels or patch rates in birds. So we just don't know the full extent of all of the benefits of biodiversity the bison will create. What's so exciting about rewilding, particularly for young people, is that it just shows you that everything that we thought we knew can be wrong. Take NEP for an example, they did things slightly differently and they had wildlife turning up in places that you, know, you never would have expected it to happen. This is a way of us stepping back, allowing native species or formerly native species to come and do what they do naturally um, on a large scale. We want this to be replicable but it needs to be science-based, evidence-based and that's what is um, so important and integral to this project. We're going to be learn, learning as we do. I am very hopeful for, for, for the future of UK wildlife. I think perhaps things had to get really, really bad before people started to really realise what they were missing. I, I think one of the things that's really, really exciting about right now is that lots of things are changing and they're really happening from the ground up. There is that groundswell of support for kind of massive environmental change, you know, in terms of putting things back and making things work in, a, in the way they're supposed to, to combat, you know, climate change, those kinds of things. And so I think if we continue that groundswell of support, that there is so much that we can teach the policymakers and the, you know, the powers that be that mean that we can put things back and we can have landscapes that work for everybody. We can't afford to wait anymore.
The need to think big and turn around the fortunes of nature has been increasingly well recognised and demanded from our government. The success of the NEP Estate Rewilding Project demonstrates that recovering our biodiversity is not impossible. With the right support from the government and conservation groups, farmers stuck with poor quality farmland, like NEP, can invest in the nature-friendly features our wildlife so desperately needs. Conservation bodies have been screaming to do this for a long time. Changes in common agricultural policy, the new um, land management schemes, to help farmers and other land owners and land managers deliver um, this ecosystem restoration services. Talking to farmers, what are the problems that they're facing? You know, how can we work together? You know, it shouldn't be conservation on one side and farming painted as a, you know, some kind of uh, evil on the other side. You know, that both things are entirely necessary and they, and they can work together. If, if there's no funding to do it, if there's no joined up thinking, if it's not a national scale, um, we're not going to be achieving what we need to be achieving. There are now um, policies and legislation in place or being reviewed and we just need to make sure that the government are behind it and that they can facilitate the delivery of this really exciting opportunity that we have. Because if we don't do it now, we've, we've missed that window. So while we haven't curbed the extinction crisis our wildlife faces, it is within reach. We are faced with a potentially grim future, so it is down to us to demand better. Better from our leaders, better for the sake of our wildlife. It is our future. We demand better.